Allen Robinson is one of the five best wide receivers in the NFL. I have zero doubt about that statement, and you shouldn't either. Not only is the Chicago Bears wide out a total star, but he also has an unbelievable history of elevating the play of his quarterback. Time and time again, Robinson's QBs have received major praise, while Allen has simply been forgotten in the background. Yet, time and time again, it's become clear that Robinson was the only reason that his QB succeeded. This is why Allen Robinson is the most underrated player in the NFL and the ultimate quarterback kingmaker. This propping up of his QB started in high school for Robinson. He attended St. Mary's Prep in Detroit, where he played football, and in his senior season, led the Eagles to the Division III state championship game. He was rated as just a three-star prospect, and Penn State was one of only a few Power 5 schools to offer him. Meanwhile, his quarterback in high school was Rob Bolden. Now you may not recognize that name, but Bolden was a consensus four-star recruit that actually joined Robinson at Penn State. Bolden was considered a top 100 player nationally and the second best dual threat quarterback in the country. Yet Bolden struggled significantly with the Nittany Lions and eventually transferred to LSU. However, Bolden was the fourth string quarterback in Baton Rouge and quickly transferred again, this time down to Eastern Michigan in the MAC. Yet even a lesser level of competition couldn't see Bolden shine. He was benched halfway through his senior season and once again threw for more interceptions than touchdowns. Without Robinson catching passes, Bolden failed as a quarterback. This will be a trend. But now let's look at Robinson in college. Robinson really only received playing time in the last two of his three seasons in Happy Valley. And this is what he produced. With a depleted roster, and nobody else of even a remotely high level of wide receiver in 2012 and 2013. At the same time, these were the QBs that Robinson actually caught passes from at Penn State. Matt McGloin and Christian Hackenberg. His first two years in college, Matt McGloin was Robinson's starting quarterback. After being a walk-on and backup for the majority of his career in Happy Valley, McGloin's career took off as a senior, just when Robinson started to receive playing time as well. His senior year, McGloin threw for 24 touchdowns and just 9 INTs. In his entire college career prior, McGloin had 22 TDs to 14 picks. Post Penn State, McGloin bounced around the NFL for five years as a backup quarterback, posting a career 75.3 passer rating with 11 TDs and 11 INTs. He was most recently in the XFL, where he lost his job as a starting quarterback of the New York Guardians to Luis Perez. So, McGloin wasn't very good before he played with Allen Robinson, and he wasn't very good after. Hmm seems like a theme is starting to develop. Robinson's last year at Penn State coincided with Christian Hackenberg's first year. As a true freshman, Hackenberg threw for 20 TDs and posted just 10 INTs. He was named the Big Ten Freshman of the Year and was considered one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. But after Robinson left, Hackenberg's career fell off a cliff. His completion percentage dipped dramatically each of his next two years at Penn State, including as a sophomore, where Hackenberg put up a hideous stat line of 12 touchdowns and 15 interceptions. For some reason, Hackenberg was still drafted in the second round of the 2016 draft by the New York Jets. With the Jets, Hackenberg was so terrible that he didn't even play in a single NFL game, despite being on a team majorly devoid of QB talent. Hackenberg was out of the league just two years after being drafted, and most recently surfaced in the AAF, where he was the worst QB in the league. I mean, he started three games in the AAF, in which he threw for only 277 total yards, no touchdowns, three picks, and a 51% completion rate. So, another terrible quarterback that Robinson propped up. Unfortunately for Allen, this trend continued in the NFL. Robinson was drafted in the second round of the 2014 NFL Draft, meaning his quarterbacks were Chad Henney and Blake Bortles. As a rookie playing for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Robinson caught passes from both QBs. Allen was very productive, but his debut campaign was limited due to injury. Once Robinson was able to get settled in and stay healthy, his talent was put on full display. In his second year in the NFL, Robinson racked up 80 catches for 1,400 yards and 14 touchdowns. He led the league in TDs that season. He was so good in his first two years that Robinson currently sits in 10th place for the most receiving yards in NFL history before the age of 23. Next year, in 2016, 
Robinson was still really good as he snagged 73 catches for nearly 900 yards. However, Robinson's 2017 season was cut short far too soon as he tore his ACL in a week one contest against the Houston Texans. But let's look back again at the quarterback connection. In 2015 and 2016, when Robinson was healthy and a starter, Blake Bortles had the two best years of his career. I mean, in 2015, Bortles threw for over 4,000 yards and 35 touchdowns. The season in which Robinson got hurt, Bortles' numbers started to slip before they tumbled down dramatically after Robinson left. Now, as I'm sure you all know, Bortles is stuck as a mere backup with the Los Angeles Rams. But where Robinson left too is the Chicago Bears. On March 14, 2018, Robinson signed a three-year $42 million deal to play in Chi-Town and to play for Mitch Trubisky. His first year at the Bears, Robinson struggled with injuries but managed to be quite productive when he was on the field. He finished the year with 55 catches for over 750 yards and just 12 starts. Yet, this past year, Robinson took his game to another level. He put up 98 catches for close to 1,200 receiving yards. But here's the thing. Those numbers would be so much better if Robinson wasn't playing with one of the worst quarterbacks in the league. Just check this out. Last year, Robinson had a 79.3% success rate against man coverage, good for the 90th percentile amongst wideouts. He also had an 83.7% success rate against press coverage, scoring in the 97th percentile. Both of these numbers landed in the top 10 of the best success rates in the history of NFL writer Matt Harmon's reception perception metric. This staggering success as a route runner meant that Robinson got open a lot and got the ball thrown to him a lot. He received the third most targets out of any player in the NFL last season. Unfortunately, Trubisky's inaccuracy deflated Robinson's counting stats. I would be remiss if I didn't comment a little further on what exactly makes Robinson so good. Robinson possesses prototypical wide receiver one measurables at 6'2", 205, with good athleticism through his great fluidity and change of direction and solid balance and quickness. Off the line of scrimmage, Robinson is also fantastic. He utilizes hard jab and stutter steps to open the cornerback's hips and create space to win ideal inside and outside leverage. He also makes the most of his long arms and powerful double arm swipes. He's an extraordinarily polished route runner but can always gain separation and get open. Robinson also owns excellent hands as drops have never been a problem for him. His flexibility and body control also pop off the screen as he's able to elevate, dive, or contort to expand his quarterback strike zone which is certainly needed when your QBs have been Christian Hackenberg, Blake Bortles, and Mitch Trubisky. Robinson's strong physical body makes him a tough player to tackle in the open field. He's a willing enough blocker that can get his hands inside and cover most defensive backs when needed. Here's one more thing. Allen Robinson is still only 26 years old. Although it's felt like he's been in the league forever, Robinson is still just entering the prime of his career. Despite having played six seasons in the NFL, he's younger than receivers like Cooper Cup, who've only been in the league for half as long. Robinson is also slated to be a free agent at the end of this year. It'll be fascinating to see what his next contract will look like. I'm sure that the Bears are interested in extending him, but can they reach an agreement that makes sense for both sides? The wide receiver franchise tag is sitting at around $18 million but I bet Robinson is looking for closer to 20 million per, and he deserves it. Regardless, I'll be excited to watch Robinson play this upcoming season with Nick Foles as a quarterback. As sad as it sounds, it's true that Foles will easily be the best QB that Robinson has caught passes from, and the results should speak for themselves, as maybe, just maybe, Allen Robinson will finally get the appreciation that he has earned. But now, I switch it over to you. What are your thoughts on Allen Robinson? Who do you think is the most underrated player in the NFL? Who's the best wide receiver? If you had to guess, what contract number do you think Robinson receives? Share the video with your friends and feel free to subscribe to the channel for more. Also, be sure to follow my other social media accounts. I'll be making a strong effort to produce great exclusive content on social media this month, so don't miss out. Finally, be sure to like the video if you enjoyed it. That is all for this one. Thank you for watching and goodbye.